Welcome. You are live at Forum 2019 from Washington, D.C. I'm Ron Painter, CEO for the National Association of Workforce Boards, and I'm glad you're joining me because we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about an industry that when we talk about rock and roll and how do you stay fast, we're talking about an industry about technology. And I've got two people from CompTIA here, and I want to say hello to Mark Plunkett, and I want to say hello to Jason Mangold. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having us. So who wants to talk about CompTIA? Tell me about CompTIA. Sure. Um, so we're the voice of the global tech industry. We're the largest yeah. um, global not-for-profit tech association. So with that, we're involved in a number of initiatives that you know drive the industry forward. Uh, we're member-led. Most of the large tech organizations are, are part I'm of our say, member -led. network. Who belongs to CompTIA? So multiple companies, so the likes of Dell, IBM, Lenovo, um, small medium businesses as well. Um, we work very closely with the, the U.S. Uh, military Department of Defense, um, state agencies around the U.S. And, and globally as well. So, you know, we need to be at the fore in terms of what's happening and, and obviously the skills shortage or perceived yeah. skills shortage um, within the tech industry and the need to drive new talent. And that's really what's led us to, to NAWB and the partnership that we have um, to, to build on that. Jason, was the, the, so the industry association or members belong, was part of this a hunt to try and develop a standard to, to develop a credential? How do we know that somebody has a tech skill? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our certifications that we use, they, they validate specific job roles okay. in the industry. So our members look to us to validate that somebody has those skills. And um, each one of our certifications validates about five different job roles um, when they go through it. So Okay, so it establishes the competency. I absolutely. know what I'm doing about something. Yep. So how do you, how do you guys keep up? with what's happening in, in tech? I mean, a big part of it is the, the member base and the communities that we have, because we're driven by industry. So the certifications are created by industry for industry. So subject matter experts from all of those organizations and others will come together and dictate exactly, well, what are we cre creating a credential for? What is the need? What is the job role? And we'll be the facilitator of that and bring the certification out to, to market and work on content and you know, all the training initiatives and the learning path that goes with that. So. so you guys are constantly looking at like new jobs, new and changes to to how we, we deal with technology. Yeah, so, um, you know, part of it is our, our certifications. We do renew every three years. Okay. Uh, but we also, um, about every six months, we, we do updates to it too to make sure that's the newest things in the industry. But beyond that, the other thing that we're looking to is is how do we keep the skills pipeline filled? Uh, yeah. So we're seeing there's yes. just so many open job roles right now in cybersecurity and tech and those sort of things. So how do we how do we equip workforce boards and other you know politicians that sort of stuff to know um, to give them the information to know what what to, what to get them for the, to, to help get people into the tech industry as a whole. Right. So that is a really good question. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you, you know how do you keep people informed about what is happening in the industry? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, again, through the communities and through the partnerships that we have, uh, we work with academic partners throughout the US. Um, we work with for-profit training providers and we've got our own customized team where we're able to build these, um, these platforms for individuals to enter the industry. You know, with tech kind of near net zero unemployment, we need, yeah. we need new blood, we need career changes, we need to do a better job of engaging the youth um, to understand that there's, there's a real career and a, and a great opportunity within tech covers every industry yeah you know, I was it's, gonna say, it's got its this own is vertical not just but it's about like uh, you mentioned Dell and you mentioned some of the other large Microsoft some of the large corporations this isn't just them right? oh absolutely this is everybody everywhere yeah you're talking about like a 4.5 trillion dollar industry when you take everything into account 11.5 million workers you know seven percent of the US workforce are involved in tech wow. but but the gap is increasing right because we need a better method of developing that pipeline. Um, we've got to get creative. We've got to talk about apprenticeships as well and, and that type of stuff. So Jason, when you're working with, with workforce boards or you're working with the organizations, is part of this a, a sense from the, from the job seeker or uh, you mentioned younger people that I, that's, not, that's not for me, that industry is not me, I can't do that. Yeah, I mean there's a big, there's a big uh, myth right now in, in tech that you have to be really good at math and yeah. all these other pieces. Right. And that's something that we, as we're on the road, we, we we try to dispel that myth, right? Um, 
anybody can do tech, right? As long as as long as they have the opportunity, sure. and that's the biggest. Uh, all the programs that we create and we try to consult with workforce boards, we do that because there's no direct cost to individuals, right? So we're not creating barriers uh, for individuals to be able to get into these industries. They just have to be able to go out and try it and and. Right. Uh, you know, be ready for these jobs of the future. So that, that's a big thing. So Mark, you mentioned you guys work with academia, you're working with, I'm assuming, like career and tech centers, community colleges. Sure. So if I'm somebody and I think I want to explore tech and I want to see like what my talent levels might be, how do I, how do I find out that some program is something that you guys work with that has value to the industry? Yeah, I think um, career advisors have got a big part to play as well, and, and we need to amplify the message out to that audience. Working with parents as well, influencers. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of influencers at that stage, so you know, we've got various programs and marketing initiatives that allow us to, um, to reach that audience, um, student associations as well. So am I coming through a, a career and tech center or community college or am I coming right to CompTIA to, be, to get certifications? So we do both. Um, so that's part of this, the team that Mark and I are lead up. Uh, so we work directly as consultants with a lot of different workforce boards throughout the U.S. Uh, okay. But there's also great programs through partners, uh, for-profit trainers, community colleges, that sort of thing. Uh, the big thing is we just want everyone to have an opportunity to get into tech. So we support all these different programs, um, but our, our big thing is just to be a consultant to say, hey, this is the best avenue for someone to get into it. Yeah, yeah. and a lot of it's about the, the learning pathway and the learning yeah. experience, yeah. right? Because the certification's the end piece, and you look at this you know, mass industry, and we, you know, going back a couple of years, we we're only really touching the end piece. You know, you look at the train to test ratio and, you know, the number of individuals that are touching a CompTIA course. So that empowered us to get into content and learning yeah. and, and direct training as well, where we can control the outcomes and, and really control that quality and can kind of bring in contextualized learning. We're looking at micro courses and tons of stuff that allow individuals to be more empowered and, you know, and gaining that knowledge in different ways. Jason, CompTIA... There's a big push right now for credentials and competency, and, but CompTIA has been doing that for a while, right? You yeah. guys have been in this. Yeah, I mean, since the 80s. Um, and Since the 80s? Since the 80s, yeah, so we've been. Uh, oh my gosh, like we all barely knew there was such a thing <laughs> as technology, right, in the 80s? <laughs> yeah, so. Holy cow. Uh, and we, I know A plus is the you know, largest, you know, one of the largest tech uh, certification in the industry. Okay. And, um, you know, it's just, how that evolves, like we, it started off as people just know it as a very baseline entry level certification. Now we're talking about things like cloud computing, cybersecurity, all of those different yeah. things. And so just to see the evolution uh, throughout the years, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, and we're evolving with the industry. And yeah. for a company, cybersecurity is not, it's not just something uh, NSA has to worry about, right? Oh, Every company's sure. got to worry about cybersecurity. Oh, absolutely. At every job level as well. You know, you look at, you really? see the hacks that are existing within um, you know, multiple organizations. We see it in the news every day. A lot of that is down to human error. You know, basic cyber behavior and protocol. You know, don't plug this USB in <laughs> if you find it. And, and we've done yeah. experiments and that type of stuff. So yeah, we've got to influence that behavior at every level. You know, the receptionist, the sales guy. Um, obviously, every organization I think now needs some sort of cybersecurity expertise in terms of you know building that infrastructure. But cybersecurity has got to go through the organization in understanding, you know, we've all got a responsibility there. Right. So where do you see, like, uh, you're in a crazy industry. Where do you see this going, Jason? Yeah, so I think a lot of people talk about automation and, you know, these, the, everyone's going to lose their job to AI and those sort of things. And the piece, the piece with that is those jobs are going to evolve, right? So, you know, people are, you know, truck driving is the number one job in the U.S. right now. Right, most, most, it is. Yeah. 20, well, like something, like it's the top job in 27 states or something. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Uh, and then you, you think of like Uber, Lyft, all these groups. When the automation comes through, they're going to they're gonna automate that, right? Um, but those jobs aren't just going to go away. They're going to have to go and do, they're going to have to learn the tech industry and people are going to have to support that automation and AI. So I think that's where we see a lot of, uh, where we need to, to teach people and have people prepared for that when it happens. So would it be yeah, safe so. to say that you guys are bullish on automation and AI creating a lot of opportunity, just different opportunities? Oh, absolutely, for sure. And I think with workforce boards, you know, it's about reskilling individuals to, to take advantage you know, of that change. And I think there's, there's a tough challenge for them because there's so many options out there. Um, and I was on a panel earlier, and my kind of one snippet of advice at the end is make sure you're, you're picking the right credentials uh, yeah. You know, and you're looking at the job market and seeing, well, what is being asked of the private sector and public sector? 
you know, making sure we're skilling individuals to tap into to what is real. You know, there's we've got performance-based items in, in the certifications that we have. You know, it's testing the real skills. It's making somebody go in into a simulated environment and actually do a task. And it's led by industry. Sure, so you're, exactly. You're part of that whole time or whole conversation. So it's continually current. There's lots of health checks. You know, we'll republish and, and bring out a brand new exam every three years. But in, yeah, but in the meantime, we're doing rapid republishing and health checks and everything else. Well, we I hear a lot of conversation. Um, about how rapidly skills deteriorate in the IT industry. Is part of this on, on the competency, like you do that because the skills do disappear every three years, or? I think the skills are just changing and the demand of industry is changing. Oh, absolutely, in tech, I mean, yeah. three years is way too long, right? And that's why in the meantime, even though we're not bringing out a brand new version, that exam is changing. Um, we're still engaging with the subject matter experts in terms of, is this really measuring this job role? Because as Jason said earlier, everything's mapped to a particular job role. You know, with each certification, we might be certifying to five different job roles. Um, so that's the key. Jason, is it more complicated, I guess, that, I, I mean, I'm a small business. Let's say I'm a small business person. Are the issues in, in tech more complicated for that small business? I mean. They may have, they, if I'm large, I may have mark on staff, but if I'm a small business, are those, is it more complicated for me to deal with? Yeah, I mean, you need to find a jack of all trades, right? Okay, I mean, that, that's, right. Uh, you have one person that's doing, you know, 10 different jobs inside of it. So yeah, that, that can be complicated, um, but and that's all you can do. You can just prepare people to get a foundation and then they're going to, they're going to go out and start training themselves and learning in all their different pieces. So I think at a small business, that's even more important uh, than a large organization. So if I'm a small business person and I'm looking at somebody's resume, I, I want to see CompTIA. Absolutely. I want, them, I want them to say, well, I mean, but I want them to say their, their skills are certified through CompTIA yeah. credentials. You want a validated credential, yeah. Com CompTIA or, or others, but CompTIA is that baseline, right? And it's cutting edge skills, it's vendor neutral, um, so it's not tied to one particular technology. So that okay. is the perfect platform for an individual to, to start their career. You know, and those that are already in industry are looking to step up the ladder and gain right. additional skills. You know, there's, there's the cyber pathway that we have, which is, which is great for that as well. Mark Plunkett. Jason Mangold Thanks from CompTIA. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to, to sit down with us.